of a glorious future the first day of a glorious future there is a kind of a division between the past and the future the past has ended already and today is the first day of the rest of your life and it happens to be the first day of the month and the first day of the week and the day of life and the Lord is telling us this unique and special day something is about to break forth in your life and something is about to happen and it is going to take effect in our lives in Jesus' name. You want to look at Exodus chapter 40. Exodus chapter 40, I'm reading from verse 1. It says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, On the first day of the first month shalt thou set up the tabernacle of the tent of the congregation. It says on the first day of the first month, there's something peculiar. The children of Israel, they have come out of captivity already. I'm just assuring you that you have come out of captivity. Yeah. This new year, there will be no bondage. Yeah. This new year, there's no imprisonment. Yeah. And this new year, all the calamities of the past, all those things have flown away, have gone away with the Red Sea behind us in Jesus' name. And here we come to a new territory. Here we come to a new day. Here we come to a new week, a new month. And a new year, the first day of the first month, you read in that verse 2. And he said, you will set up the tabernacle of the tent of the congregation. Then it says, and thou shalt put therein the ark of the testimony. And cover the ark with the veil. It's telling us that this year the centrality of the ark of the covenant will be the important thing in our lives in Jesus' name. Maybe you don't understand the history of the ark of the covenant and the things the ark of the covenant did. Just the presence of that ark in the temple of those uh, Ashdodites that had captured the ark of the Lord. And then Dagon was there representing Satan and dragon. That Dagon fell all by itself. I'm saying that all the paths of darkness are going to fall this year. Whether we are there to pray or not, just the presence of the ark of the covenant and the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart, in your soul, in your spirit, in your family, in your life, all the paths of darkness, they're going to bow, they're going to be broken this year in Jesus' name. The centrality of the ark of the covenant that the Lord is talking to us about on this first day of the new year that the Lord is saying this is going to be the presence of the almighty God in your life and then he says in verse 4 and thou shalt bring in the table and search in order the things that are to be set in order upon it you find those words set in order set in order set in order a few times over there that that means that everything that's in disarray in your life disorganized in your life this is the year of setting things in order yeah. all the things that brought confusion disorganization in your life and then this one is there and that one ought not to be there i can't understand this i can't understand that there's confusion there there's confusion there the lord is about from this day to set something in order in your life in jesus name and you know, every time the Lord will make a midway correction, midway, midway reorganization, that maybe when you are asleep and when this is happening, that's happening, the Lord sets everything in order in your life. And you just say that this year is different. It's like all the disorderliness, disorganization, or, or disarray, everything is just set in order this year in your personal life in Jesus' name. I can't understand this, my child. I can't understand that, my child. I can't understand this other one. Even about my husband, about my wife. Why is this confusion always there? Just wait a minute. This is the day of setting everything in order. 
you know, in your husband's life, in your wife's life, in your children's life, in your parents' life, in the whole family, and then in our church, I can't understand. I'm hearing this about that. I'm hearing this about that. Where do we begin to set things in order? The Almighty God Himself will set everything in order in the body of Christ in this church in Jesus' name. Then he says, Thou shalt bring in the candlestick and light the lamps thereof. There is light this year. All darkness, everything is going and the light of the Lord will shine in our hearts and our lives in Jesus' name. Look at verse 25. And he lighted the lamps before the Lord as the Lord commanded Moses. Moses represents all the ministers of the Lord, all the ministers and preachers of the gospel in our church. And through our ministers and preachers and pastors, we're going to have the light of the gospel. There's going to be illumination in Jesus' name. There's going to be revelation in Jesus' name. There's going to be inspiration to you. As you look at the ministers this year, you'll wonder, I had that minister before, I had that preacher before, but things are different now because there's light coming. There's light coming into all our ministers, and they're going to have illumination, they're going to have inspiration, they're going to have revelation they never had before in Jesus' name. And then he tells us in verse 34, in verse 34, for it says, then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. It's the year of glory. I said it's the year of glory. It's going to be a glorious year in Jesus' name. But remember the beginning. It is from the first day of the first month of the year that the Lord said you set all that up. And if you put the ark of the Lord in its central place, then every other thing will come into place and there's going to be the setting in order. And then there's going to be the glory of the Lord that fills the church of the living God. Look at the final verse there in verse 38. It says, for the cloud of the Lord was upon the tabernacle by day and the fire was on was on it by night and then it says in the sight of all the house of Israel throughout tell me the rest all their journeys that is as a journey from January to February from, from February to March and then all through to December the, all through this year your journey is going to be the fire of the Holy Ghost and it's going to be the cloud of protection. And everything is going to be set in order because we started the chapter by the first day of the first month of the year. And because of this peculiarity, that's what we're looking at this day. And we're looking at the first day of a glorious future. The future is going to be glorious. The future is going to be filled with the glory of God. You saw it right there. And that's why I'm talking about three kinds of days that represent today. Number one, a prophetic day. Today is a prophetic day. It doesn't always come like this that you have a prophetic day. But the Lord is telling you that this is unique. And this is special. And this is spectacular. It is a prophetic day. Number two, it is a preparatory day. That is, I'm looking at the future. I'm looking at the rest of the whole year and I'm saying that whatever decision I take today and whatever determination you make today whatever you're saying oh today this is my desire this is where I'm going then you look at the whole year ahead of you it's a preparatory day for something ahead number three it is a peculiar day number one a prophetic day number two a preparatory day and then number three a peculiar day come back to number one again it's a prophetic day for a great future a prophetic day for what kind of future? A great future. Number two, a preparatory day for a greater future. Well, already the Lord gives you the word. And then our, minister, our ministers in singing, they told us that you know, every promise the Lord has given you, it is for this year. Every prophecy that the Lord has given you, it is for this year. And we're saying that you need to prepare for something greater than you ever imagined in your life. If you had a small vision, broaden it. If you have a little dream, expand it. Because it's going to be greater than your thought. This year is going to be greater and broader and deeper and higher than you ever prayed about or ever thought about in your life in Jesus' name. If you prayed for two things, you're going to have four things. If you prayed for three things, you're going to have seven things. Because it's going to be greater than you ever imagined in your life. We're in for a greater future. And today is a preparatory day for that greater future. Number three is a peculiar day for a grand future. 
a grand future. A peculiar day for a grand future. It is coming. I said it is coming. And you're going to experience it in Jesus' name. Number one, can you tell me number one again? A prophetic day for a great future. We're looking at Exodus chapter 14. Exodus chapter 14. What a day it was and what a day this is. Exodus chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 13. It says, And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you, will show to you today. Everybody say today. And then he says, For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them no more forever. You see, these children of Israel, every time they saw an Egyptian, they saw an oppressor. Every time they saw an Egyptian, they saw a captor. Every time they saw an Egyptian, they saw a taskmaster. Every time they saw an Egyptian, they saw somebody holding the weave, tormenting their lives, harassing their life. They saw somebody that, you know, they, they were helpless. There was no way they could get out of the hand of the Egyptians. But all of a sudden, somebody came to town and said, he told, told Pharaoh, let my son go go so that he may go to worship me. And you know the story, how Pharaoh began to say, how can that be? I will not let them go because they are my captives and they are my slaves forever and ever. Eventually, after a series of miracles, then he said, okay, you can go. But all of a sudden, he said, what came on me that I allowed those people to go and at this time now, they were hedging between two mountains and then in front of them was the Red Sea that they couldn't swim over because we're talking about millions of people and then behind them you have the Egyptian army running after them saying we got you we got you we're taking you back to where you came from somebody wants to take you back to all those harassments of last year it will not happen they want to take you back to all those sorrows and all those tears of, of the past years it will not happen even though we see them they might be very near but they are coming to their end in Jesus name I want you to understand that although it was strange to the children of Israel, they didn't know that Pharaoh would still follow them. But known unto God how this was from the foundation of the world. God knew that Pharaoh will come. He knew that the Egyptians will come. He knew that the army of Egypt will come after them. He knew before they got to the borders of those uh, of the land, he knew that the mountain will be there. He knew that the mountain will be there. He knew that the Red Sea will be before them. He knew that they will be hedged in in between the mountains and the sea and the Egyptian army, nothing takes God by surprise. I said nothing takes God by surprise. And so he knew what he was going to do. And then Moses said, don't fear. And I come to tell you on this first day of the first month of this new year, there's nothing for you to fear. Because he says today, this special day and this unique day and this peculiar day, that the Egyptians that you see today, you will see them no more forever in Jesus' name. Well, you know the story to cut a long story short. Before the end of the chapter, all those enemies, we cannot see them anymore. And before the end of this chapter in your life, because there's a new chapter in your life. Give me a good amen. amen. And there's a new phase in your life. Before this new chapter of your life, before this new phase of your life, all those Egyptian armies you used to fear, they used to bring pam, pam, pam in your heart. You'll see them no more in Jesus' name. Look at verse 30, 31. It says in verse 31, And Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians. And the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. They saw the great work of the Lord. You will see the great work of the Lord. Did I tell you that this day for you is a prophetic day? And it's a prophetic day for a great future ahead of you. In Joshua chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 7. Joshua chapter 3, we're looking at verse 7 there. A prophetic day that the Lord is speaking some prophetic words into your life. And the Lord is saying, every prophecy you receive today is not just for today, it's for this week, it's for this month, it's for this year, it's for your future, it's for the rest of your life. And the Lord is going to do everything he's saying to you today in Jesus' name. Joshua chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 7. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Joshua is gone, I'm the one here now, I'm and the Lord said unto me, and the Lord said, you know, the people have gone. When you read the names of these people, you put your name there. I said you put your name there. 
why will God be talking to Joshua now today when Joshua is already in heaven? And when Joshua is no more fighting any battle, when Joshua is no more being confronted by those Canaanites, you are the one on the battlefield today. And what the Lord told Joshua at that time, who is he talking to today? It's you. So you put your name there. And the Lord said unto, who is this now? Tell me out loud. And the Lord said unto you now, this day, when I begin to magnify you in the sight of all Israel. It's a prophetic word for the prophetic day that is saying, it's telling you that the future is going to be greater than you ever thought. Because the Lord said, this day will I begin to magnify you in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so will I be with you. I receive that. I said I receive that. It is mine, it is yours in Jesus' name. The Lord is giving us a prophetic word for today because it's a special day, unique day, and a peculiar day. And the Lord says from this very day, you'll see it when you begin to pray after this message because something is going to happen to you. If you're brought in any kind of challenge, any kind of mountain, the Lord says from this day, I'll begin to magnify you. If you were looking small, no self-esteem and no self-confidence and no courage, and you know the people, they have slashed you to pieces, and you look so small like this in your sight, in the sight of all your enemies, and you look like a little grasshopper. You didn't even feel that you, the person you are, the person the Lord has made you, it is from this day, all that kind of mentality, the Lord will blow it away because this day he has come to magnify you and you are magnified in jesus name and your life is not going to be revolving around what the canaanites said what the jebusites said and what the high bites said it's going to be based on what the almighty god is saying in your life from today in jesus name magnify magnify have you ever seen magnifying glass that little thing will put that glass there and when you look at it the thing is bigger than you ever thought it's more than double more than triple more than quadruple of what it was because there's a magnifying glass and god is holding a magnifying glass over your life and he said, I'm going to magnify you, make you bigger than you ever thought. And when the devil sees you, you're no more like a grasshopper, you're like a giant. And the devil will not know what to do with you anymore because you are magnified from today in Jesus' name. I'm looking at 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 24. 1 Samuel chapter 24. Here was, uh, you know, somebody, we we'll call it, his name is David was running about and then eventually uh, something happened that is he met his enemy and when he met his enemy well he should have killed him but he didn't kill him and uh, so eventually he spoke out and then the enemy that is Saul began to say is that your voice my son who is he talking that I'm hearing look at first Samuel chapter 20 for a prophetic day for a great future even your enemies will realize you have a great future and they will not be able to cancel or detract from any of that greatness that is coming upon your life in Jesus' name. In 1 Samuel chapter 24, I'm reading from verse 16. And it came to pass when David had made an end of speaking these words unto Saul, that Saul said, Is this thy voice, my son David? And Saul lifted up his voice and tell me, tell me out loud. You know, this year we're not going to weep for the enemy. The enemy will weep because of us. When they see the magnitude of what you become and the greatness of what you become, and then they say, in spite of everything, we.